tragic final days of Annette Funicello. The real reason why she passed away. During the height of her fame at Walt Disney Pictures, Mickey Mouse Club star Annette Funicello received more mail than the studio's two most popular leading men, Mickey Mouse and Zorro. To young people she was, quite simply, the quintessential dream girl. Males liked her because, over the course of the series' run, from 1955 to 1959, she blossomed into a buxom beauty before their eyes. Females liked her for her sweetness and sincerity, and for her winning smile. She was so beloved that she became known, and was often billed, by her first name alone. Annette Funicello was born Annette Joanne Funicello on October 22, 1942, in Utica, U.S., to Italian-American parents, Virginia Jean and Joseph Edward Funicello. The family moved to California when Annette was four years old. She grew up with two brothers, Joey and Michael. The family faced poverty for many years. The decision to move to California was made to make sure the children received good education. Her father worked as a mechanic, and during the first few months of struggle in California, the family lived in a trailer park. However, things changed for the better and Joseph got a steady job as a mechanic soon. Annette was a shy child but also loved performing arts and excelled in dancing and acting. As soon as she moved to California, her desire to venture into acting intensified. She took professional lessons in acting and dance. This helped her overcome her shyness. She also learned to play the drums and participated in various beauty pageants from time to time. She won the locally held Miss Willow Lake Beauty Contest. As a child, she also modeled. She learned ballet during her junior years, and this turned her life around. Walt Disney, the man behind the vastly successful empire, himself saw her perform a dance routine during one of her ballet classes. He asked her to audition for Disney along with 200 other children. She was the last to be selected as a Mouseketeer and her career received a boost. Since she was selected by Walt Disney himself, she carried a lot of pressure on her shoulders. Disney started the Mickey Mouse Club in the mid-1950s and hired the Mouseketeers to become more popular with the children. The show became a mega success by the end of its first season. Annette became the most popular of the Mouseketeers and the show's overall success made her doubly famous. She started receiving numerous fan letters. A study revealed that she received about 8,000 fan letters every month, while the other members of the original club received about 800. The Mickey Mouse Club became a huge success, and Annette appeared in many of their dance routines and comedy sketches. Inspired by its success, Several spin-off shows such as Adventure in Dairyland and Walt Disney Presents, Annette were later aired. Annette also sang a song for Walt Disney Presents, Annette, which became the stepping stone of her future music career. Following the success of the song, Walt Disney offered Annette a professional contract. Disney ventured into live-action films with the proposed release of the film Rainbow Road to Oz, but the film got shelved. Disney had planned to cast some of the Mouseketeers to star in the film but the plans did not materialize. Finally, in 1961, Babes in Toyland released. The film starred Annette but released after she had already made her film debut. In 1959, Annette appeared in the first film of her career, The Shaggy Dog. The film featured her as Allison and was a major success. It was the most profitable Disney film that year. After her successful stint with the Mickey Mouse Club, she remained in touch with Disney for a while. She made appearances in series such as Zorro and the Horsemasters. She also appeared in the successful Disney films The Misadventures of Merlin Jones and The Monkey's Uncle. Annette stated many times that she did not want to be known as a singer. Despite that, she created many hits, such as Tall Paul, First Name Initial, Puppy Love, and Toot Sweet. She also performed live on the show Disneyland After Dark. Toward the mid-1960s, when her contract with Disney had ended, 
Annette continued to appear in more mature film roles. In 1963, she appeared in the film Beach Party and continued to appear in many such films in the years that followed. The films mostly had Annette co-starring with Frankie Avalon. The production company American International Pictures made a lot of profit from Annette's films and soon decided to offer a contract to her new persona was very different from the one she had projected during her stint with Disney. She was requested by Disney to wear modest bikinis for her roles, but she denied the request. Over the years, she appeared in many beach films, such as Bikini Beach, Pajama Party, Muscle Beach Party, and How to Stuff a Wild Bikini. Toward the late 1960s and the early 1970s, she became disinterested in her career as an actor. She frequently mentioned in interviews that she wished for a simple house with nine kids. She signed fewer films during that period. After the 1968 film Head, she took a break of almost two decades to appear in the 1987 film Back to the Beach, where she once again flaunted her beach girl persona. She also continued to appear on TV from time to time and was part of shows such as Pee Wee's Playhouse, Christmas Special, Full House, Growing Pains, and Lots of Luck. But in 1992 at age 50, Annette went public with devastating news. She had multiple sclerosis, a debilitating neurological disorder. She had the most severe form of the disease and over the years lost her ability to walk, relying first on a cane, then on a wheelchair. The singer and actress eventually lost her ability to talk and Annette faded from public view. Many fans still wonder what happened to the beloved Hollywood. Despite her illness, Annette went on to launch several new business ventures, including a line of collectible teddy bears. She also authored an optimistic, scandal-free autobiography, which became a highly rated TV movie. With hopes of finding an eventual cure for MS and other neurological disorders, she has also set up the Annette Funicello Research Fund for Neurological Diseases. In her personal life, Annette Funicello dated Jack Gilardi for a while before they got married in 1965. The marriage lasted until 1981, and the couple had three children. In the 1980s, she was frequently seen with racehorse trainer Glenn Holt. They were rumored to be dating and got married in 1986. The couple stayed together until her death. Annette and fellow actor and singer Shelley Fabares were lifelong friends. She was also very close to fellow Mouseketeer Lonnie Burr. She later stated in an interview that he was her first boyfriend. Annette was raised as a Catholic and she ardently followed the faith till the end of her life. Sadly, on April 8, 2013, Funicello died at Mercy Southwest Hospital in Bakersfield, California from complications attributed to multiple sclerosis. She was just 70. Goodbye Annette Funicello.